All right, guys, this is going to be quick because there's really not a lot that I can say here because, full disclosure, I didn't really get to watch college football this last week. Uh, Saturday, I was out basically the whole day. Um, I went to the Mariners game, and that ended up being literally an all-day commitment because the game ran for almost six and a half hours, and... I have in the stadium, I, I can follow scores a little bit, but there's no way I can actually watch anything. It takes me time to get to the stadium. So I was probably out of the house for about 12 hours, put it all together. So yeah, didn't really get to watch anything. And all I can really do is look at stats and that doesn't really do that much for you. So Straight up, the rankings this week haven't changed that much. The top five haven't moved. I don't see how I could move anybody significantly like that because I've only gotten the chance to watch a little bit of stuff. I didn't get a chance to watch all the games that I wanted to watch. So straight up, I don't have anything super amazing to say this week. Uh, my top five stays the same. Obviously, Levis played a pretty good game. Uh, he did throw the one pick, but again, picks are going to be part of the Levis experience because of where he is as a player, where he's trying to run a pro-style offense, which is something I'm totally okay with. Uh, Hendon Hooker played an awesome game against Alabama. The problem with Hendon Hooker now is he's playing so well and getting so much attention, I think there's a really good chance that somebody decides, you know what, we're going to use a top half of the first round pick on him. He's too good. It doesn't matter that he's old. So... Part of the Hendon Hooker thing is that you can get him in the second. Well, you're probably not going to be able to get him in the second now. You might not even be able to get him in the late first. So I have some concerns with the way Hooker plays, simply because he is a one-read quarterback most of the time, and that's not necessarily what you want in the NFL. But I still really like him for obvious reasons, and I still think you can probably... He probably won't go in the top 10 at least, which Levis and Stroud probably will. Uh, Stroud didn't play. He stayed the same. DJ played a good game for Clemson. Uh, no reason to move him. KJ went off. He had five touchdowns. I have a little bit of movement at the bottom of the list, the bottom half. I bumped Will Rogers up. He didn't play a great game against Kentucky, but Kentucky's really good. And after having the opportunity to look at him a little bit more, he just seems like pro-ready to me, which is appealing to me right now, especially with the way things are going with this team's development. It might be a little ahead of schedule. I bumped Anthony Richardson and Cam Ward down one spot each because they, uh, well, Cam Ward didn't play particularly well. Richardson played okay. But again, I'm just starting to lose interest in the more developmental guys. Uh, if if we decide to commit a, at least partially to Geno, that will change a little bit. But as of right now, I'm starting to lose my interest in those guys a little bit. And neither guy played great. Bryce Young played really well against Tennessee. Didn't get the win, but uh, did more or less all he could. And I had to throw Grayson McCall in at number 10. I had to bump him up in there. Because um, there he, he played a game against Old Dominion where his team got clobbered 49-21. to McCall went off. He had monster numbers. Did everything he could. And his defense gave up 320 rushing yards to Old Dominion. 10 yards a pop. More than 10 yards a pop. You do that, you're getting in my top 10 just because I feel bad for you. Um, just to mix things up a little bit this week, I did throw in like honorable mentions. 11, Penix. <coughs> um, Penix uh, broke the school record for yards in a game, so I got to put him up there. Um uh, 12 is Leary. I did uh, bump him down significantly because he's out for the year. I still really like him, but that's going to hurt his draft stock. And I'm bringing back Tyler Van Dyke because he's actually put together some good games now. And I'm starting to buy into the Cristobal theory, which is basically Cristobal is going to make Van Dyke look mid because that's what he did to Herbert. And we all see how good Herbert is on Sundays. So Cristobal's system might just basically limit be like a power limiter on these quarterbacks. So given the fact that you can probably get Van Dyke on day three, I'm going to throw him on the list. Again, there's no way I'm spending a top 64. Maybe I, I would even hesitate to use a round three pick on him. But if you can get him in the fourth round, that that's kind of the sweet spot for me. In fact, 
these three guys I added on the honorable mention list, they're kind of all in the same boat for me, where I would like to get them in the fourth or fifth round after you have either taken another quarterback in the first, a la RG3 and Kirk Cousins, or after you've made a commitment to Geno for a year or two, maybe three. So it's fine to get a guy like Penix or Leary or Van Dyke. Those guys are going to be available probably early day three, but they cannot be plan A. You need a, you need them to be plan B, like Kirk Cousins was. So if you take Will Levis in the top 10, still my number one quarterback, and then you decide, you know what, let's hedge our bets here, let's get Tyler Van Dyke in the fourth, I think that's pretty sweet. Remember, everything's relative. If Tyler Van Dyke was going to be a first-round pick, he wouldn't be in my top 100 quarterbacks here on this list. But because I think you can get him in the fourth because of the way things are going, I did. I think he's at least an honorable mention. And Penix and Leary are kind of in the, a similar boat. I'm starting to come around on the idea of them being plan B. Um, honestly, Cam Ward, the way he, he played, he didn't play a very good game. Maybe he'll end up being that plan B type quarterback. But uh, everything's relative. And that's really all I got because, again, I didn't get to watch very much college football this week. Um, I watched a little bit just to get a feel for some stuff, some of the new additions on this list, some of the things I moved came about because of some little things I saw, but I didn't get to watch much, so I'm not going to say much more. So that's all I got. See ya.